Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Riggenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Last week, Cabrini Student Activity Board held various game shows in the Widener Lecture Hall where Kelly and Anthony had the chance to participate. Let's check in with them to see how the event was. Hi, I'm Kelly Igo. And I'm Anthony Foley. And we are here at Widener Lecture Hall at Cabrini College. It's game show week, and we are about to play How Well Do You Know Your Blank. I guess we're going to find out how well you really know me, huh, Kel? Yeah, we're going to see, and we plan on winning, so let's see how it goes. On Friday, September 28th, students got together with their friends, roommates, or significant others to participate in How Well Do You Know Your Blank, which was the final event that concluded game show week presented by Catboard. Throughout the events, the teams were asked questions and had to respond to match their partner's answers. Answers were tallied up, and the teams with the most match responses were the winners. We just played How Well Do You Know Your Blank, and we are right, we do know each other. We won some cool prizes. We won some gift cards, we won one to the Regal, we won one to Maggiano's, and we won these t-shirts. It was a lot of fun, thanks for coming out. I'm Kelly Igo. And I'm Anthony Foley, on, on location, location for location. location. Presidential candidate Mitt Romney held a rally earlier this week in Wayne at the Valley Forge Military Academy and College. Romney touched on his plan for future employment saying, quote, the young people of today will have a great job tomorrow and have a prosperous future. Romney later said that this next century must be an American century, that America must continue to lead the free world and that the country is on a road of growth, prosperity and strength. According to Romney, free people pursuing their dreams is what makes this economy work. Ready to jump into fall? On Saturday, October 6th in Wayne, St. David's Episcopal Church will be hosting its 161st Church Fair and Country Auction. Enjoy food from McDavid's Grill along with sweets of all kinds. Also, there will be many treasures to choose from, including those from the book, toy, and sports tents. Admission is $2 for the event. The, the event will be held rain or shine. October marks Domestic Violence Awareness Month. On Tuesday, October 9th, Cabrini will host a symposium headlined by gender violence prevention educator and author and filmmaker, Dr. Jackson Katz. He's known for his outstanding work in gender violence prevention in schools. Registration for this event is mandatory. Sign up no later than Friday, October 5th. For more information on Dr. Jackson Katz, visit his website at www.jacksonkatz.com. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to Rob for this week's sports update. In Cabrini sports, the volleyball team's winning streak now stands at not six, not seven, not eight, but nine matches after three sweeps of Immaculata, Marywood, and Baptist Bible. Their shot at number 10 will come on Saturday at Cairn University. The men's soccer team will return to action on Wednesday against CSAC rival Gwynedd Mercy College after a week off following a 2-0 win over Keystone College with goals scored by sophomores George Lambricios and Sean Neary. The team will also face off against Newman University on Saturday. The women's soccer team beat Immaculata University by the lowly score of 1-0 on Tuesday. They will face Baptist Bible College in a home game this Saturday at noon. Don't miss it. Field hockey beat Newman University 5-1 on Tuesday with their next game coming Thursday against the College of New Jersey, who is ranked number one in the nation, but not number one in our hearts. The men's cross country team plays fourth at this weekend's Belmont Classic with the women's team not qualifying for a team score, but we still love them anyway. Senior Jeff Young finished in third place for the event. Next up is this weekend's Goldie Beacom College Fall Classic. In Philly sports, the Phillies have officially been eliminated from the postseason for the first time since 2006 and will close their season against the NL East champion Washington Nationals. You tell me five years ago that the Nationals were going to win the NL East, I probably would have just laughed in your face. The postseason begins this Friday with wild card play. 
The Eagles held on for a 19-17 victory over the rival New York Giants on Sunday night. Giants kicker Lawrence Hines had the opportunity for the game winner with 15 seconds to go, but just missed it short. Next up for the Birds will be taking on the Steelers in Pittsburgh this Sunday in the Battle of Pennsylvania. In Flyers news, right winger Matt Reed has become the latest player to jump overseas for the lockout, signing a contract to play in the Swedish Elite League. In Sixers news, the team picked up the option on head coach Doug Collins' contract, ensuring that he will coach the team through the 2013-14 season. The team also began training camp on Tuesday. This week's Location Athlete of the Week goes to Maddie Edwards, who recorded her 21st career shutout in Tuesday's win over Immaculata. Good for you, Maddie. That's all I got for this week in sports. Be sure to tune in next week as I provide an update on Cavalier Sports, as well as the NFL's Battle of Pennsylvania matchup at Sixers Training Camp. Now back to Val. Earlier this week in Kentucky, a school bus carrying 47 children crashed into another car. The bus rolled onto its side, injuring all the children and three high school students who were driving in the other car. Rain had been falling the day of the crash when both vehicles collided at an intersection. Everyone was taken to the hospital, but fortunately, injuries were not life-threatening. Mistaken identity was behind a father shooting his son in Connecticut. According to CNN, the shooter got a call from his sister saying that she heard someone outside of her house whom she thought was trying to break in. The shooter approached the suspect who wore a black mask and black clothing and shot him. The suspect was later to be found the son of the shooter. The father had no idea it was his son until the black mask was removed. No charges have been filed against the father. New York Times publisher Arthur Solzberger died at age 86 this past week after a long time illness. Solzberger started at New York Times in 1963 and later held the position of publisher, chairman, and chief executive of the company. According to President Obama, Solzberger, quote, wasn't afraid to tell the stories that needed to be told. The New York Times jumped Solzberger to a national scope. According to his son, Arthur Solzberger Jr., his belief in quality news will always be with us. It has been reported that coffee is good for you. Our own Kevin Bullioni sat down with health services' Susan Fitzgerald on the topic and got some opinions from Cabrini students. It's not just the coffee, it's actually the caffeine in the coffee. Caffeine is a stimulant and the studies have shown that moderate or low dose amounts of caffeine have been linked to improved memory and um, performance. It's about low dose or moderate amounts of caffeine and some of your more espresso type drinks have more caffeine um, and therefore have more of the effects associated with caffeine that may make it less useful for improving memory or mental acuity. Um, decaffeinated coffee, although it's not caffeine free, um, probably doesn't have enough caffeine to cause that stimulant effect and improve memory or mental acuity. And there are risks um, for everyone linked to overconsumption of caffeine. Again, it's a stimulant. Uh, the, the biggest side effect with consuming too much caffeine, whether it be in the form of coffee, whether it be in the form of no-dose sleep tablets or energy drinks, is it, as a stimulant, it increases your heart rate so people get palpitations from too much caffeine. So anybody that has a heart disease or heart condition that causes their heart to beat too fast anyway would want to avoid caffeine. I like coffee a lot. I drink uh, maybe two cups of coffee a day. I think it's great that it's beneficial to your health. And like most things, it's uh, in moderation. Uh, so you can't drink five cups a day and expect that it's going to be good for your heart, but uh, you know, a cup a day. That's good. Uh. I, I think it's great that it's beneficial for my health. It helps you lose weight. I know that I love coffee. I drink a lot of it. I drink about three to four cups of coffee a day, preferably French vanilla. It makes me more awake, so I use it to, I, dr I usually drink it before studies. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Christine with your weekly entertainment update. CNN has confirmed that the Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane will host the 85th annual Academy Awards. It has been a good year for the funny man who directed, wrote, and lent his voice to TED, which grossed more than $54 million its opening weekend in June. And in September, he hosted Saturday Night Live for the first time. It's truly an overwhelming privilege, MacFarlane said via press release. 
Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez are taking their relationship to a brand new level. The happy couple are planning on spending a lot more time together. The singers recently purchased a huge plot of land near Los Angeles where they will build their love nest in Tarzania. This makes a lot of sense considering Selena's mom lives in the surrounding Woodland Hills area and both Justin and Selena are spending much of their free time in the valley. The word around the block is that Khloe Kardashian and Mario Lopez could become the new hosts of X Factor. Lopez and Khloe K are in the final stages of negotiation to co-host the X Factor, a source close to the show told CNN on Tuesday. Producers of the Fox TV music competition and managers for Lopez and Kardashian are putting the final touches on the hosting deals, the source said. What do you think about the pair hosting the show? Tweet us at LocationPR to tell us what you think. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's go to Bethany for your trip around the world. An Afghan soldier fired on American soldiers in eastern Afghanistan this past week. The situation is still being sorted out. U.S. military deaths have reached 2,000 in Afghanistan, but overall have reached 4,000 since fighting in Iraq. This past week in Kenya, one child was killed and three were seriously hurt in a grenade attack at a Sunday school church. According to CNN, a person in the church said that worship services were going on when the explosion happened. Police believe the attacks were caused by the militant Al-Shabaab group who control most of Somalia, since troops from Kenya were sent into Somalia this past October. This past Sunday marks the deadliest day in Iraq. 30 people were killed in a series of bombings. The attacks mainly focused on the Shiite community. The bombings seemed to be an attack on increasing levels of violence. 25 were killed due to seven explosions around Baghdad, and two more were killed due to a car bombing, while the rest were badly injured. Political fighting continues in Iraq due to the political views of the Shiites, Sunnis, and Kurds. According to CNN, Iraq is worried that the country may return to the violence that came close to tearing it apart in 2006. Cabrini alum Craig Vagel, class of 2005, and the new president of the alumni board was interviewed by our very own Alex Sabo. Let's take a further look. What made you want to come back to Cabrini and be a part of the alumni board? Uh, my involvement in wanting to come back, coming back to, to Cabrini College and became involved uh, with many aspects of the Alumni Association uh, was because I felt that the college offered me so much while I was here as a student that I needed to give back and further help the college uh, spread their mission. As the new president of the Alumni Board, do you have any upcoming special events planned? As the new incoming president of the Alumni Association, uh, we do have a lot of uh, events that are in the planning stages right now. Uh, one in particular that we're working uh, to uh, strive for is an event up in the Jersey City Hoboken area where alumni will be able to uh, meet and greet with the cake boss, uh, Buddy uh, Velastro. Um, so I'm in the process of trying to set something up there. Uh, nothing's been concrete yet, uh, but that's one of the exciting events that we're hoping to host for the Alumni Association for the upcoming year. Sounds really cool. And, uh, you know, typically we have uh, our annual events. Uh, one is Team Trivia that happens in March, which is a, a huge success for the Alumni Association. That's where we get all of our uh, monies to help uh, fund the scholarship, uh, which will be given to uh, students on campus. Do you have any plans to engage more alumni in any of the affairs of the college? Uh, well, being the, uh, the first male president and the youngest president of the Alumni Association. Um, it's my hopes uh, that I can bring back young alum and have them become more involved uh, with the campus uh, as well as the Alumni Association. Um, in years past, I, I think the college has done a, a very good job at trying to bring the young alum back, um, but my hopes is that hopefully we can bring uh, the events to the, uh, to the alum and not necessarily have people come back to Cabrini but have Cabrini come to them and get them involved. So that's one of my uh, goals. Cool. Were you involved in campus activities when you were a student here at Cabrini? Uh, yes, I was. Um, it started my freshman year. Um, I was involved with the campus activities and programming board on campus. Um, I seated at, uh, sat on that uh, board and then also was the uh, vice president for it. Um, I was also involved as a student ambassador uh, giving tours on campus. Uh, I was the uh, head of the communication uh, club uh, wing for the video studio and radio station. 
Um, I was a resident assistant uh, for two years, uh, and I was uh, also involved with the St. Jude's uh, Research Children's Hospital uh, that raises monies for kids who have cancer. There are so many parts of your life between your work at ABC, volunteer firefighter, and running your own video production company. How do you juggle everything? Uh, definitely time management uh, skills. Uh, I am a very, very busy guy, uh, and I try to uh, make time for all the things in my life that I feel are very important, uh, Cabrini being one of them. And everything that I become involved with or have interactions with, it's all about prioritizing and trying to figure out you know, where you want to put most of your, your time and your efforts into. And, and that's where I, uh, I feel like I'm successful at doing so many things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes don't get a lot of sleep, but <laughs> it's all worth it there in the end. <laughs> so. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Bethany Vigenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Have a great week, Cabrini.